Welcome, this is Dr. Amanda Rackinson ZAPQ. In this tutorial, we are going to examine the SPSS output and interpret it for the two main effects, both type of program and gender, when there is not a significant interaction effect. To do this, we are going to examine the results found within the test of between subjects effects table. So let's go ahead and scroll down in the output and find that table. As you can see, it's right here. And what you'll notice is that this is the same table that we examined when determining if there, is an, there was an interaction effect. Really, the first two rows of the table are not of concern. And we're going to examine the gender main effect first. So our first concern is this gender row right here. So as you can see, there's the gender row. And um, the first thing that we're interested in here is really the significance column. Because the significance column helps us determine whether or not we have statistically significant results, whether we have a p-value less than 0.05. Here we see that the value in the SIG column for the gender main effect is 0 0.054, which is more than the significance level we set of 0 0.05. This means that the gender main effect is not statistically significant, or stated in another way that males and females do not statistically significantly differ in their sense of community as measured by the classroom community scale. Thus, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Next, we're going to take a look here at the type of program row, which helps us determine if there was a statistically significant type of program main effect. Again, here we're interested in the significance column, which contains the significance value for the effect. If the type of program main effect is statistically significant, we will have a p-value of less than 0 0.05. And here we can see uh, in this column that the SIG, in the SIG column that the significance level is less than 0 0.001. Therefore, this main effect is statistically significant. We can reject our null hypothesis and conclude that traditional and online students do do in fact statistically significantly differ in their sense of community as measured by the classroom community scale. And then we'll take a look at the descriptives to discuss which group is higher than the other. However, right now what I'm going to do is open a Word document and we're going to discuss how to take this information from this table and put it into a result section. Here you'll see that I've used ABCs to label the output so that we can discuss the breakdown of the results. Um, in order to support our conclusions, which we just, just discussed, we need to report the statistics like this. So we need to have the F value, the significance level, the effect size, and the observed power. Here we see F, and F refers to the, distri the F distribution or the F test for the ANOVA. Next to the F, we need to report degrees, and, degrees of freedom, which I've labeled uh, B and C here and our degrees of freedom actually for both our type of program and gender is 1 and 72. Then uh, let's go ahead and take a look at gender. The next thing that we're going to look at is the F value which I've labeled E here. So our F value for our main effect is 3823. Next we have the, the alpha level and uh, that is labeled here with F, and that's the probability of obtaining the observed F value if the null hypothesis is correct. And for gender, it, we've already determined it's 0 0.054, so we're going to report down here P is equal to 0 0.054. Partial eta squared, which is our effect size, is labeled as G, and that's 0 0.05. And then our observed power, which is labeled as I up here in our output, Observed power is equal to 0.488. So we, we report that for gender, and then we do similar, we do a similar thing for type of program. And we can then write that, for example, let's start with gender. The there was a, and I'll correct this as I go, there was insignificant evidence to reject 
the gender main null hypothesis, and that conclusion is based on these results that we just went over. However, the results did reveal that the type of program main effect was significant, and that's based on these statistics. We didn't go over them, but you would pull this you would pull the data from the output in the, um, in the same manner for type of program as we did for gender. And then we can interpret these results in saying that we then had evidence to reject the null hypothesis, conclude there was a difference. Um, if we interpreted our effect size, we can say that the type of program accounted for about 28.9% of the variance in the sense of community score. And we can also note that the power was strong at 0.99, which indicates 99% accuracy in these results, which is pretty good. So that's how we would use the data from the tests of between subjects effects table to interpret our two main effects. Now, since we did find significance in the type of program, we want to take this a step further and interpret which group scored higher, the online or the traditional group. One way to do this is to look at the descriptives ta table and determine which mean is higher. And if we did this, what we would find is, um, so I'll go back to the output here. We'll scroll up to the descriptives. And what we can see here is that our online group had a higher mean, 59.76, than our traditional group who had 39.51. So we can say that the online group scored higher than the traditional group in terms of their sense of community. We can actually confirm this by examining the pairwise comparison table, and that's also in our output right here, and we can actually talk about the mean difference. There was a mean difference of 18.640, and if I go back to our Word document here, you can see how to use the information in the pairwise comparisons table to make a conclusion and support that conclusion. Here's an example. After reporting the results of the two main effects, we can say that sense of community was statistically significantly greater for students enrolled in the online program as compared to those enrolled in the traditional program, and this is supported by the statistics found in this table. The mean difference was 18.640, and we use the positive rather than the negative because we're saying that the online was greater. If we were saying that the traditional was less, we would use the negative 18. 0.640. We also report the standard error, which is 3.59, and then the significance level of less than 0.001, stating that the mean difference was significant. At this point, if our independent variable had more than two groups, we would actually inspect the multiple comparisons table, which contains the results of the post hoc test. Our output doesn't have a main comparisons table because we don't have an independent variable with more than two groups. However, if we did, um, we would report that information and it would be done in a very similar way as we're reporting the information found here in the pairwise comparisons table. Now we can use all the information that we've looked at thus far to compile a results section.